Hey everyone. First and foremost, I want to say this will probably be my last court video for a little bit. I am pretty much in the path of Milton and I have no idea what is going to happen and what the next couple weeks are going to bring. I will keep you updated as much as I can through social media if I have access. Now, today we're going to head over to the great state of Kansas. I am not even sure what to say or how to describe this case. This woman was living with a man. He tried to evict her three times now, um, has been successful, but the evictions never actually physically happened. They happened in court. They were granted, but she was never physically removed from the residence. He was living in the residence as well, and it's gotten to the point to where he is now living somewhere else. She's living in the residence, and in my personal opinion, she appears to be batshit crazy. There's also a medication issue, mental health issues, and all of that. I think both of those things can be going on at the same time. You let me know what you think because I just can't wrap my head around this one. This is the 13th Judicial Circuit in the state of Kansas, Judge Marfin, and it is an absolute dumpster fire. So light the match. Let's go to court. All right, our parties present on the McGregor versus Hope matter. Uh, <clears throat> yes, Your Honor. Kurt Holmes is here representing the plaintiff, Mr. McGregor, and Mr. McGregor is present. All right. And Ms. Hope, are you present, ma'am? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Can you hear me, Your Honor? I can hear you. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Uh, we are on the record in... Uh, Hector Van Lewis McGregor versus Julia, or sorry, Julie Hope. Uh, the case num number is uh, Butler County 23 LM 1143. Uh, Mr. McGregor appears in person and by and through his counsel, Kurt Holmes. Uh, Ms. Hope appears in person and pro se. Um, I am in receipt of several documents in the file. Uh, the original pleadings, of course, and also some additional uh, documents and answer and then some supplementary uh, information. Um, Mr. Holmes, uh, at this juncture, what is the particularized position and prayer of Mr. McGregor? Your Honor, Mr. McGregor is the owner of the property in Andover. It is his home. Um, during his um, uh, pendency of living there in the home, uh, Ms. Hope needed a place to stay. Um, he allowed her to stay in his home for a period of time, a short period of time. Uh, however, Ms. Hope has continued to uh, stay in his home and uh, not vacate. Uh, and it has resulted in Mr. McGregor actually having to leave his home uh, due to Mrs. Hope's, Ms. Hope's presence. Um, and so we have filed an action under... Um, 61 uh, 3801 by delivering a three day notice to Ms. Hope that was done on December 7th of 2023, asking that she vacate the home. Uh, and to date, she has refused to do so. Okay. Uh, Ms. Hope, do you have any uh, particular position or prayer on the case at this time? We lost her, Judge. Give me just a second. Okay, thank you. Oh, can you hear me now, Miss Hope? I'm so sorry, Your Honor. I'm oh, so sorry. I got disconnected. That's Ms. okay. I'm glad you were able to come back in. Uh, basically, uh, in case you missed out on that part, uh, Mr. Holmes had just summarized uh, for uh, his client the position they are taking that uh, Mr. McGregor had agreed uh, to let you uh, live in his home for a period of time, and that uh, because of uh, various issues, they're seeking your eviction from that home, and uh, that's the request they're making of the court. Do you have any particular position of prayer today? Yes, sir. I um, yes, Your Honor, I do. Um, I have, um, I've submitted some evidence um, via facts today. 
um, and um, in regards to uh, the retal the retaliatory treatment that Miss Hope received, and part of me as I speak in third person, it's a little bit easier, Your Honor. And um, Mr. McGregor and Miss Hope had an agreement until the sixteenth, and then he sent he he submitted a an eviction notice on the 7th, which was a breach of the contract that both parties had, number one. Number two, um, in regards to Ms. Hope trying to secure other um, residency and such and medical treatment, Ms. Hope received numerous threats, which can be provided um, via video, um, via recording. Um, in regards to Ms. Hope's health, Mr. McGregor um, threatened Ms. Hope if she left the residence that she would be locked out. That also can be substantiated. Ms. Hope was just recently um, so sick that she finally was able to make it to urgent care. She does have a health condition of a, uh, a tumor on her esophagus and she was ordered a, a CAT scan in December. But because of her fear of any additional uh, mistreatment or unlawful actions against her, as Mr. McGregor admits on video to using the police as a means to have Miss Hope removed. And this it goes along with her health, that Miss Hope was so scared to leave the premises to get treatment for her health because of his threats to lock her out. And so she did finally, barely able to function, mm -hmm. was able to make it to get to the urgent care and she has was treat was prescribed six medications. So Ms. Hope has a few a few motions to make. Number one, it would be um, to continue this case. And I'm sorry, I should have requested to to start with the the motion to dismiss it, Your Honor. Um, and she does request a motion to continue it because she is just recently being prescribed for um, the proper medication to be, and she is representing herself and. She is only asking for a week, um, and that would be that would be a motion she'd like to have a set the set this um, case for trial next week so she can subpoena the pharmacist she spoke with yesterday in regards to her concern because of the threats that Mr. McGregor has made regularly about Ms. Hope seeking medical treatment, and this is not the first instance that this has happened. Um, and so Ms. Hope also submitted a, a notice to vacate on the 21st and will be gone in a week. Um, if, and so she does, she does, and I apologize, Your Honor, I'm really not health wise the best that I could be. Um, and this is important to me and I respect everybody's time. I respect uh, this opportunity to speak and I, do like to follow through on my agreements. It just made it very difficult to leave on the assigned date when I received an eviction notice and it had not even been, the time had not even expired. Number one, number two, Ms. Hope was scared for her health and safety. And number three, um, She wanted to have, she wanted to speak and use her voice to advocate for her rights. Um, Ms. Hope has provided a copy of an agreement where Mr. McGregor um, agrees to allow Ms. Hope to submit his car insurance dated back to October of 2024, mm -hmm. 23, um, to submit to her insurance agency um, as she, as he, has he signed a statement that Ms. Hope has legally resided is that residing in his property. Mr. McGregor um, <clears throat> claimed on his notice that Ms. Hope was at the residence illegally. And Ms. Hope would like to file a motion to dismiss the case because in that notice, Mr. McGregor stated that Ms. Hope was there illegally, but Ms. Hope had been there since September. So if from the understanding that Ms. Hope understands of the law in her petition in response to the second um, petition and claim amended claim by uh, attorney C Kurt Holmes, she did address that um, 
pursuant to KSA 613803 and KSA 582564 or KSA 582570, Mr. McGregor didn't provide proper notice of terminate, terminate, termination of the tenancy. And he did not specify a cause for terminating the rental agreement early, as is required by law, either for not paying rent, for violating the lease, or a 30-day notice to, term to terminate the lease. Ms. Hope believes that this is this this eviction is a result of uh, is a it's a retaliatory action because Ms. Hope told the police on December seventh when it, um, they were here that Mr. McGregor had admitted to her on video and on voice rec recording prior on two occasions that he had just called the police to have her physically removed and he she told him that she was going to talk to the police and participate in that invest in investigation. Um, he's also, I mean, that's just one of the examples. Um, so okay. well, I think uh, what I'm hearing you say is uh, two or three different things. I want to make sure I'm understanding your requests. It sounds like you are wishing to file a motion to dismiss this action. You're also wanting to set this matter over one week for trial for purposes of getting any exhibits or potential witnesses uh, in line and prepared and under subpoena. Um, it's my further understanding that you're indicating that irrespective of all that, and correct me if I'm wrong, your intention is to be out of the home by <clears throat> I think your letter said the 28th. Forgive me, I'm trying to find that here. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, is that, is that, have I summarized that correctly? Uh, y yes, sir. I, I know I did present a few motions. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Yes, Your Honor. I did present a few motions. And yes, I, I have provided a, what I hope to be enough time for a, and a reasonable time, and in that letter stated specifically a seven-day notice to most definitely va vacate this, these premises, absolutely, and never return to this property again, ever. Mr. Holmes, uh, we had received uh, at the clerk's office here uh, a letter today which communicates much of what uh, Ms. Hope has explained verbally, um, including her intention uh, to be uh, out of the property uh, on the 28th of January. Um, with all of that background, um, what is your position with respect to uh, setting a trial date a week from today or uh, any of the other uh, motions or requests that uh, Ms. Hope has indicated an intention to file? Your Honor, we're present today. We'd like to move forward with getting possession. Uh, we're ready to move forward. Um, so I would ask that her request to continue this be denied. Um, as I've indicated, my client has had to vacate his own home and she has completely taken over his home. Um, and uh, she's had notice that she was to be yeah. vacated clear back on December 7th. So uh, we think it's just further stall on her behalf and um, really don't give much credence to the fact that she's going to vacate. Okay. Well, I'm going to go off camera and off mic just for a moment. I just want to make sure I understand everything that's in the file here. I have reviewed it, but I want to make sure I haven't missed anything. And then uh, I'll come back on and uh, rule on her request and we can go from there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Hope, are you still able to hear me, ma'am? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Um, I have had a chance just to refresh my recollection briefly. Um, Ms. Hope, I do want to explain, uh, you had mentioned a couple of times that there were uh, exhibits in the file um, that the court may wish to consider. I'm not, I'm not finding any exhibits as yet in the court file, so um, I just want to make you aware of that. Um, I am going to uh, grant the request for continuance for one week to uh, January 29, 2024 at 2.30.
Miss Hope, I don't know what impact the exhibits that you're wanting to submit may have. I don't know uh, what the evidence will be at trial. I certainly don't know uh, what uh, ruling I may make uh, having heard that uh, evidence or having seen those exhibits. But I do also want to explain that while I'm taking care to hear what you're saying and I'm trying to be uh, as best I can be um, even handed in terms of hearing uh, what you are saying as compared to the pleadings and statements uh, from the plaintiff. I also feel uh, it very important to <clears throat> understand that, you know, from the plaintiff's perspective, uh, Mr. McGregor is out of his own home. And so I would anticipate if at the uh, trial, uh, next week, uh, for whatever reason, you're not following up on what you had explained about uh, vacating the premises on the 28th. And if at the conclusion of that hearing, I were to find that an eviction would indeed be appropriate, I suspect Mr. Holmes would uh, have that paperwork ready and prepared to send to the court for immediate review and filing. And I just want to make sure, you know, we're kind of all on the same page about um, the fact that there are no exhibits as yet in the file, and if you're wanting those to be heard, um, I'll need to have those available by next week. And also just to understand that there are uh, very heartfelt interests on both sides of this case. I don't know uh, where the evidence will lead, but if it were the case that the court were to make a finding in plaintiff's favor, I would anticipate that the um, intention would be on the plaintiff's part to try to, as quickly as possible, effectuate that eviction. So, I mean, that may be a non-issue uh, in as much as you've expressed uh, verbally and in writing uh, your intention to be out of there uh, by uh, the this coming Sunday, but I just want you to kind of understand uh, the fact that the court file doesn't yet have the exhibits you mentioned. Your Honor, may I yes. speak, please? Sure. Um, the police were knocking on my door. I did not answer them, though, but they were knocking on my door. Um, so I, I hope that was... I have I'm no sorry. idea for what reason they would have been there, and I'm not going to weigh in on the appropriateness or inappropriateness of your actions in that context. Uh, but uh, certainly, as far as this case is concerned, I am granting your request for continuance for one week. It will be my intention to uh, go through to a conclusion when we reconvene uh, next Monday at 2.30, and I'll look forward to seeing it each and all here at that time. Thank you so much, Your Honor. I appreciate you, you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. Thank you, Mr. McGregor. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Julie? Yeah, yes, Ms. Wells? You don't need to be on the, the hearings any longer. You're done. With your, yes, we're done with your case. Okay. Ma'am, may I, may I, do I need to, um, may I speak with you later today? Do I need to? Uh, you, may, might or may I, call me, you might try to call me first thing in the morning. Well, Call me after nine. I have cases in the morning. I have hearings in the morning, but you can call me after nine tomorrow. May I ask you one question? question? Yes, ma'am. I can definitely. Um, I actually, I think, um, I don't know if I have a doctor's appointment. I've got a lot of them lined up. Um, okay. Well, I'm but, here all day tomorrow, except for the noon hour. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, do I need to, um, may I ask, do I need to file the any paper? How long do I have to, how long do I have to file the paperwork about today's hearing? what paperwork are you referring to do I, I don't do i need a do i need to file anything today with you all anything in addition in regards to this you don't need to file anything no i will file a notice of hearing for your next hearing which is next monday okay yes ma'am thank you ma'am i will be in touch with you tomorrow thank you all, right. all so much thank you bye-bye i don't have a copy of the hearing on the 29th but i can only assume it went as expected because there was an order of eviction issued on that date. That is the last entry in case number two. All right. The next case I have is uh, Hector Van McGregor versus Julie Hope. The case number is Butler County 24 LM 
1193. Uh, Mr. Holmes appears for the plaintiff. Is Ms. Hope on this meeting? I don't believe Ms. Hope is on the meeting. Uh, Mr. Holmes, you may or may not know that the court had received some information prior to our going on the record and the request is that basically for medical purposes uh, the case be continued at least a week. I recognize the hardship that that might potentially work on your client, but I wanted to inquire of you as to any position you had on that. Well, um, I'm not um, surprised by this that because this has kind of been a pattern, but in any event, if it needs to be continued a week, um, we'll go ahead and, and note that on our calendar. I don't know. I don't see my client up here. Um, he's supposed to be in here somewhere, but. Um, Is uh, uh, Mr. Van McGregor present on the meeting? I don't see him either, but there are a lot of people on this meeting and I might just be missing him. Okay. Well, if that's, um, if that's what uh, we need to do, we'll go ahead and do that for a week then. All right. I'll show this is continued at Ms. Hope's request to uh, September 16, 2024 at 2.30. And we'll look up, uh, look forward rather to taking the case up then. All right. Thank you so much. Mr. Van McGregor versus Julie Hope. Uh, Mr. Holmes, I saw you on the meeting for the plaintiff. Is Ms. Hope present on the meeting? All right. In the circumstances, counsel, do you have any uh, prayers, positions, or requests of the court? I do, Your Honor. I would ask um, uh, that we be allowed to move forward um, with a journal entry and a red due to the default of Ms. Hope. All right. Um, I'm going to um, ask you to do um, exactly what you propose um, and prepare orders to that effect. I do want to indicate that the court had some level of concern associated with the request for continuance uh, when this was uh, related to the court last week and the case was continued to today's date. I'd like to put this on the docket for this coming Monday at 2.30, but with the expectation uh, if there is uh, no uh, information that comes in yet later today, I'll be prepared to sign whatever orders you have on file uh, tomorrow or Wednesday, and uh, we'll be prepared to move forward from there. I, just, uh, I don't know for certain whether there might be anything yet coming in today, and I want to leave room that the circumstances are unusual enough. I want to make sure that uh, we have an alternative uh, if something should come in. All right, I'll go ahead and submit the paperwork and then I guess the court can let me know if something else occurs. Right, and I suspect your uh, paperwork should be um, reviewed and signed uh, this week. And uh, I guess you should probably see that electronically. And at that point, you'll know that uh, there's no need to convene on Monday. All right, thank you so much. Mark. Thank you, have a good day. Thank you. The next case I have is uh, Hector uh, Van McGregor uh, versus Julie Hope. The case number is Butler County 24 LM193. The plaintiff appears in person and by and through his counsel, uh, Kurt Holmes. Uh, Ms. Hope, I believe, also appears in person and pro se. Uh, this matter was here originally on the 9th of September uh, based upon uh, a last minute uh, submission uh, by uh, the respondent. Uh, the court uh, continued the case to uh, September 16th. Uh, at that time, at least initially, uh, the plaintiff appeared, the respondent did not appear. I had explained at that time that I would uh, make a finding in favor of the plaintiff, but that uh, because of the uh, nature of the uh, matters previously before the court and acknowledging that other additional information might be coming in that day, I set uh, today's date as sort of a backstop, such as it might be needed uh, to move this case further along. In the interim, uh, there has been a receipt of a request, and, and I think the receipt 
actually transpired prior to our hearing, uh, prior to Ms. Hope appearing uh, later in the day uh, on this matter on the 16th. And it requested, amongst other things, a continuance of the case to today's date. It also uh, had a request that uh, another judge hear the case prospectively. Um, more recently, and in fact, just before the hearing today, I have received a request from Ms. Hope uh, asking that the matter be set over to October 7th and indicating that she will be filing a motion uh, seeking that a new judge hear the case uh, prospectively. Um, with all of those things said, and, and again, um, uh, I, I think it might be uh, maybe useful to go a little out of order and give you, Ms. Hope, an opportunity to explain what specifically it is you're going to be wanting, why you're wanting it, and uh, what you're intending to file by way of motions, and give uh, Mr. Holmes an opportunity to respond to those things. I'm a little bit unsure. Are you feeling, Miss Hope, that you're capable of going forward today? Uh, Your Honor, um, yes. This is uh, this is Julie Hope, and I, if I may, if I may speak. Um, in regard well, you, you may. I'm just confused a little bit because I was under the impression, based on the correspondence, that you might not be able to uh, participate in today's hearing. And I just don't want you to feel pressure. Of, of course, I would like to move this forward. I think that would be in everybody's interest. But I'm also um, a little bit unsure exactly um, what you're wanting this court to do, at least at this snapshot in time. And so if you would like to speak, I want you to feel that you absolutely may do so. And I also, if you're unable to speak for whatever reason, I'm happy to hear your explanations along those lines as well. Your Honor, um, uh, to the courts, if I may, if I may speak, I, um, in regards to the documentation from my psychiatrist, it states specifically that it's, it's addressed to today to the Butler County District Court due to her psychiatric health. Julie Hope is unable, unable to participate in court proceedings at this time. I will uh, reevaluate her status in two weeks, um, sign my doctor. So currently, Your Honor, my medication is there is there's a national shortage and I am not and I'm in the process of getting the medication I need to be. I thought I found a responded to a civil action that I could connect to. We had something in common. You see, she is struggling to get her medication as well. There are a lot of people that are struggling to get medication. Apparently, the active ingredient in most ADHD medications is limited by the federal government. This is according to my pharmacist. And it was overprescribed during the pandemic and it hasn't been reined in and under control. So lots of people are taking it that don't really need it. And the people that really need it aren't able to get it, some of them. And it really sucks because when you don't have it and you desperately need it, you can't function. But anyways, so there's a lot of us that have been struggling with this and driving hours away to get to a pharmacy that actually has it. <laughs> and it's a fun little conundrum. Is unable, unable to participate in court proceedings at this time. I will uh, reevaluate her status in two weeks, um, sign my doctor. So currently, Your Honor, my medication is there is there's a national shortage and I am not and I'm in the process of getting the medication I need to be fully competent um, and my one of my diagnoses is protected by the uh, the um, disabilities, the American with Dis Disabilities Act, and so I'm I'm we're requesting this continu continuance because we need to I need to get the medication number one because it's uh there's a shortage and number one I need to be on this medication at least a week to since I'm representing myself. Um, just on the side note, I don't anticipate that there will be anything. Once this, once I'm on this medication, I have a family member who is going to be um, with me and 
we're going to be, um, I'm going to be, be with them. And so I don't even see those. I will see that. I'm, I see that this will all be, this could be, this will be moot at that point. But since I'm not, Ms. Hope is not currently prescribed as she's, as she should be. Um, and it's of no fault of her own. I am requesting this, this, this um, motion to be to for this case to be heard on the Octo October seventh. So I am fully treated, and my psychiatric needs can be um, be um, treated as they should be, as any other person. Um, and also, in reference to. Um, um, you know, I did make the, the, the request according to the Kansas statutes, chapter 2311 for the change of judge. Um, and there is a lot in this case. And so I'm making this request for a continuance based on, um, the, the legal documentation from my medical provider. Um, we have to live, go live in a hotel explicitly stating that because of psychiatric um, psychiatric needs that the case be continued. And I- So are you intending I, to file a, a written motion with respect to the question of who should be providing presiding over the case? I, I, I don't know. I'm waiting to hear back from uh, a okay. friend lawyer okay. in regards to all of that. But I did state in <clears> that, <throat> I did state in the, the facts that was uh that i had help in preparing um requesting requesting that since your honor i do think you're a great judge you have you have been you heard a prior case in regards to this matter and so um that's why we've decided it um that are that we request a, a different judge so in order for me to be able to function normally on making this last continuance, Your Honor. Um, in your paperwork, you said you wanted an extension to submit necessary legal documents uh, and a motion for this hearing to be heard by a different judge. And, and I think that's appropriate. I'm, I, I, I'm not saying that um, your concerns aren't important, but I don't fully understand what they are. I mean, if I heard another uh, similar case, I don't know on its face what that would be a, a reason why I couldn't hear the case from this point forward. But I want to leave you room to, to file that motion as you had uh, requested. Um, I want to ask... Uh, Mr. Holmes, uh, having heard Ms. Hope's prayer, what position does the defense have? Well, obviously, we're being completely blindsided. She's never presented anything to us over this. My client has been out of his home now for two months. She's taken over his home. Uh, my client doesn't have, this isn't a hospital. Um, this, you know, this is just continued delay. Um, I don't have any idea why you would not be able to hear this case, um, but obviously it's all about further delay, further keeping my client out of his home. Um, by statute, we're way out of time at this point. I don't know um, any reason why we can't move forward today. Um, uh, obviously, she's had plenty of opportunity to find other housing. This has been pending since July 29th. So my client and I are opposing any further continuance on this. This will, this is now the third time we've been here. Your Honor, I object, and I find that his statement is erroneous. The um, the plaintiff, Mr. McGregor, has full access to this home and on numerous occasions um, has been here requesting sexual favors. Um, and, Your Honor, I don't feel safe discussing the reasons why I'm asking for the assignment of a new judge. Um, but I do have evidence that needs to be presented to the to the courts in regards to this case. And I would appreciate um, Mr. Holmes' um, consideration in this prayer, along with the courts of Butler County to accommodate um, Ms. Hope's disability so she can be treated um, for her disability and be have her medic, get her prescriptions and be pres have be prescribed appropriately as anybody who is requesting the affordance of having their 
rights as somebody who's disabled as defined by the Disabilities Act. This is absolutely erroneous, erroneous that Mr. Holmes would claim that this is um, a uh, uh, Ms. Hope trying to delay the courts. Ms. Hope needs to be medicated in order to deal with the very traumatic facts of the case and being able to present this evidence to the courts. And also is um, very, is, is going to have the, a family member with her present for the for the hearing on the seventh, hopefully with the new judge, and to finalize any and discuss any questions regarding this case and completing it at that time. One of the questions I have um, when you had last week uh, sought continuance to today's date, you were expectant that you would be able to go forward uh, today, and I guess. My concern is, uh, if I were to continue this to November the 7th, what would be the likelihood that you would indeed have your medication and be on it for the week or so you said you'd need to be on it so as to be able to go forward that day? It would be, Your Honor, it would be 100% that Ms. Hope would be having, have her medication. Um, she's should be receiving that in the mail. She should have received it a few days ago, actually, but still hasn't. And any documentation from my medical provider can substantiate all of these claims that are being made by Ms. Hope. Well, uh, and, and I'm sorry, you said you expect that you'll have that medication today? I am expecting that prescription. I'm ha I have to have the prescription reset because it, I never received it in the mail and I need it to be, so it's ha it has to be resent again. So I had an appointment with my doctor and I meet with them every week. So you're meeting with them today, is that what you're saying? I already met with my doctor and I'm going to be meeting again today, yes, in regards to this case. And I do have to be medicated to deal with the trauma um, in regards to the PTSD and the injuries that have been inflicted. And and forgive I, me, I, I just I was unsure about one I'm, thing. Are, are you saying that the medication is now available? You just need to get a replacement prescription. Uh, the medication has not been av available, no, Your Honor. So I have to, I have to get the medication. And if I have to go to a pharmacy in another city, I will. I want to just get this case over with and closed and move on, move on with my life. But currently, yes, there's a national shortage in the medication. And so one day I can call on, yes, they have it. Another day they don't have it. I'm just waiting for that prescription in the mail so I can go fill that prescription. But since I haven't gotten it, I told my doctor and he said he's going to send me another prescription. And he cannot, since it's a controlled substance, he can't have it requested over the phone. But I'm just wanting to get this case. I wanna just finish this chapter and move on with my life. I'm just begging the courts to allow me to be able to, to be able to represent myself in a fully functional, clear state of mind and to be under this medication. Well, I think that there is um, a little bit of attention in that I want to, uh hear loudly and clearly your concerns, and I want to uh, hearken to your heart's cry for uh, some reasonable accommodations to be made. I'm understanding you today to say that even if it were to mean driving to another city to obtain the medication, you're expectant about being able to begin that medication uh, sometime today. Um, if I were to set this over to um, October the 7th, it would be important that you provide written motions explaining in fuller detail any concern you have about my presiding over the case and also to give Mr. Holmes notice of specifically uh, what claims you're making and, and how they are impacting you. And I'm asking, do you feel that you would be in a position if you indeed start that medication today 
to submit those written motions uh, to the court uh, with copies for Mr. Holmes uh, before the time of that October 7th date. Your Honor, to, to clarify, the medication is I ha I'm waiting on another prescription, so it will be a couple days before I get the prescription. I won't be, I won't be, I won't, I haven't received the new prescription. And so I'm waiting for it. So it will be a couple days before. Okay. I well, that. if that, even if that were the case, you said you'd be a hundred percent ready to go on the seventh. Can you also, and I don't, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth. I'm just trying to understand. Would you also be in a hundred percent position to be able to explain in writing what concerns you have uh, either with respect to uh, your current circumstances as they intersect with uh, the petition before the court and also uh, with respect to any concerns you have? Your Honor, you're asking me if I will be able to write motions and submit them to the courts before the court hearing on October 7th. Correct. And, then, and, and, and then, what I'm also asking is that it would be... Uh, early enough that counsel would have a chance to review them and that I would have a chance to review them as well, because I want to hear um, any concerns you have and to the extent I'm able to act upon them. But at this point, um, when you tell me you think I've done a good job at one point and also say that you have concerns in terms of feeling safe, I'm not sure exactly what to do with that in terms of my continuing to preside over this case. Um, Your Honor, that's a lot of information to process. Um, and you are, you're, you're a judge and, and I appreciate your service for the state of Kansas and I have the most respect for you. I feel that there might be, there's a concern of impartial impartiality um, seeing that this case, there was a previous case. Um, and I would also, Ms. Hope also has evidence that she'd like to submit to the courts. Um, okay. well, with respect to that, your submission, you can have those in before the seventh. That's what I'm driving at. If that's what, if that's what you need, your honor, then I will, I will submit to your request, your honor. I do request though, that there be a different judge as well. And I say that with all the utmost respect, your honor. Well, and I too am trying very hard to not only respect you, which is easily enough done, but also just to understand where you're coming from. And I'm in a position where if there is a cause that uh, justifies same. I'm happy to recuse myself from a case, but at this point, I'm not really hearing anything like that. So um, if you're saying that you're going to make submissions, you had earlier indicated in your uh, submission today that um, you would file any motions that you wanted to file. I'm just going to uh, trust that um, as you've explained, you'll be 100% ready to go that day, including submission of any evidence or motions that you want to have considered, and uh, we'll take it up. And I do think it's important, and I know you're saying it might be a moot point by then anyway, but um, I think it's important that we uh, do our very best to work through to a decision on the 7th. And I am going to continue at this last time at your request to give you an opportunity to uh, put your um, concerns uh, before the court in the way that seems best to you. And we'll take up the matter at that time. It'll be, I'll set it for um, 3.30 that day um, so that maybe the rest of the docket can be uh, worked through prior to taking up your case. And counsel, I note your objection for the record. I understand where you're coming from, but I think there are a lot of uh, dynamic issues in the case, and I think that's the best way to solve them. You're, you're, do you anticipate this will be a final hearing then, or is this gonna that, that, that's be my, going on further? That, that's my expectation. Yes, sir. Okay, I appreciate your, that. Thank you, Your okay. Honor. Yes, ma'am. Please, may I speak, please? Yes, ma'am. Um, thank. I just want. I want to say thank you, Your Your Honor, Judge Murphin, for your understanding, professionalism, and allowing my allowing me my legal rights to be 
have a stable, clear mind to be able to present the facts of this case and have the final hearing on the October 7th. And I also want to thank Mr. Holmes for his professionalism. And um, I also request Mr. Holmes that if your if your plaintiff, Mr. Hector Van L. McGregor, has any mail that should be provided to Miss Hope so she can be medicated that it not be withheld from the defendant at this time or any other mail that is related to that is for Miss Hope so she can um, uh, be have her rights to receive her mail um, and be 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 medicated properly. Um, in regards to your honor, the, the questions about, um, um, or Mr. Holmes, can, will you please instruct your plaintiff to, to provide any mail that is, that Ms. Hope is legally entitled to that has been shipped to her and not withholding? Well, I know that because it's now two months later and he has had to move out of his home, any mail that's directed to him is going to another address. So I can't stop that. So you cannot instruct your mail. Oh, can you instruct your plaintiff to send a key to the mailbox so Ms. Hope can have access to her mail so she can be prescribed as, as legally she's supposed to be prescribed by her um, licensed psychiatrist so we can move forward with this case? Um, I don't have any uh, control over that. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, all I can do is ask to have access to my mail and not have it not be without. Um, and then my request, Your Honor, is in regards um, to one of my, um, uh, excuse me, one of my, uh, I can't think of what it's called, but I have ADHD along with the PTSD. And um, in regards to being able to process and perform my duties um, as being requested and I'm being afforded and I'm so grateful for. Um, for instance, when I was in my undergraduate courses, I would have somebody who would take notes for me because of the way that I process information. Is there any way that the, the that I can correspond with the, um, have correspondence uh, via email with um, your clerk in regards to the what was discussed here today so I can have all of that information um, timely before the hearing and can you tell me what time what date would be timely specifically I'm not sure exactly what you're asking what what information are you requesting well did I file motions today when I sent that information no, no you just basically indicated that that was your intention I'll, I'll read the section again um, uh, you just said um, that uh, you were motioning for an extension to submit any necessary legal documentation for this case and also a motion uh, of this hearing uh, for this hearing to be heard by a different judge other than uh, myself. And I believe I also motioned to have any of the faxes submitted to in into the the base case file as well, I believe. So those were not motions, Your Honor. Well, I'm I'm understanding the way that the sentence is constructed. Um, you're asking for an extension of time to submit the necessary documents. Those documents have not yet been submitted, and also uh, a motion uh, that the court be uh, that another judge be considered. And I'm. I haven't heard anything to this point that would prompt me to believe that that's appropriate. However, I'm giving you an opportunity as you submit these other documents to make that uh, formalized request with the reasons you have for making same. Thank you, Your Honor. So if I submit the, the document for the motion, one of them specifically for a different judge, if you receive that in a couple of days, that judge would be able to be at the hearing for the October 7th, then we could finalize all of this. Is that what you're saying, Your Honor? Um, I am saying I will do my best to do exactly that. I know Mr. Holmes would also uh, like to uh, move this matter forward, but I would like to also explain that depending on what the motion contains, 
Mr. Holmes might want to be heard on that question himself. So um, if you want to submit what you think is appropriate, I'll be sure and look it over and I'll do my best to try to put this case in a posture where we can finish this matter on the 7th of October. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Ms. Hope. Uh, thank you, Mr. Holmes. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, we are reconvened on the Butler County Limited Actions Docket. The uh, next case I have is Hector Van L. McGregor versus Julie Hope. The case number is Butler County 24 LM 1193. Uh, we have been here three times previously on this case on September 9, uh, at which time uh, the matter was uh, basically such that the respondent uh, didn't appear, uh, but there was a re continuance request which was granted uh, for uh, one week to the 16th of September. On September 16th, uh, Mr. Holmes appeared uh, for his client. Default judgment was ordered. The court did uh, note that um, if there was uh, some new information introduced as uh, some of the signposts indicated there might be uh, the court would have to take those issues potentially into account uh, the matter was reconvened on the 23rd of september uh, again mr holmes appearing uh, with his client uh, the respondent uh, was also present in person and pro se the matter was continued uh, to today's date um, i am in receipt of some additional information and it's only just come in and it's approximately 20 pages some of them being rep repetitious some of them being simply the facsimile transmission pages but in any event um, i've sought to uh, review it in pertinent part it uh, sets out in writing a request uh, for a continuance uh, indicating that Ms. Hope will be participating uh, in some treatment and requesting that this matter be uh, set over to the 21st, to the 14th or the 21st of October. Actually, this one simply says the 14th. I think one of the other documents said 14th or 21st. Uh, Mr. Holmes, does your client have a position on any proposed continuance of this case? We made it very clear two weeks ago that this was the last and final setting. Um, so absolutely, we would be against that. And uh, this is just an ongoing um, issue. Uh, and as the court is well aware, we're almost two and a half months now with my client being out of his home. And so um, so we would uh, object to that. And I, we don't see any reason why we can't move forward with getting my client's home back. Okay. And I didn't get a copy of any of this again, so I'm sorry, but, you know, I, I, I'm just blindsided. Yeah, and it had just come in, and it looks like we might have one other party in our meeting. Ms. Baylin, um, is the other party on this case? I don't know who's on. It just says legal advocate. Okay. Um, could you please identify yourself, the party identifying as legal advocate? Your Honor, um, this is Julie Hope. I'm on a doctor's visit with my psychiatrist right now in regards to the motion of continuance. He is on the call right now and I have submitted documentation for a motion of continuance as I will be in. Sure. What's your doctor's treatment. name? Does, does, do they wish to speak at this point? Doctor. Sir, he needs to submit. 
Sir? Yes. Any, again, I'm here to request a motion of continuance for this case so I can have well, witnesses. Well, you, you said your doctor was there, He's and on. I guess I'm just yes, asking, he, he is, is, is your doctor yes, going to I, wait your Honor, on your situation? Judge, judge Pro Tem, I wish to wait to answer any further questions until I have been seen for what is stated in the document, which is a signed document sworn by Miss Julie Hope to Judge Pro Tem James Murphy. Miss Hope is going to be in rehabilitative services where she'll have medical advocates to help her understand this process. I ask that you continue this case where I'm in a medical facility and I'm surrounded by medical staff 24 seven. I'm a very fortunate woman as I have excellent health care. Well, I'm delighted for you and that's wonderful and not everybody has that blessing. Um, and the, and the, proceeding any further today will cause undue damage. And please allow Ms. Hope to have a motion to continue this to pretrial as set in precedent case on the motion that was filed and faxed to the 13th District Court of Butler County, Kansas for <laughs> the case number, excuse me, let me, let me pull up this document, case number BU22LM271 in the matter of Hector Van Al McGregor against Julie Hope with the, with the Mr. Colt Holmes as his legal representative. Please allow Ms. Hope to, pardon me, pardon me, Ms. Hope requests is kept, Ms. Hope is in it is requesting an extended period of time for neurological rehabilitation, treatment of spinal cord injuries, cardiac care, complex trauma, and mental health treatment. As a result of these severe medical and psychiatric conditions and injuries, Ms. Hope is not in her full capacity to participate legally, to participate in these legal proceedings for this case. She then asks for it to be heard by a, a magistrate judge um, rather than pro tem James Murphin and Ms. Hope needs time to regain her mental capacity as she has medical document to prove the medical injuries that are stated in this motion of final motion of continuance. Okay. Ms. Hope, Ms. Hope as is leave is leaving the area of Western Kansas to go far away from here to get the medical treatment that she is legally allowed to have. And according to Code of Civil Procedure Section 43C, 43C, um, uh, legal precedence which mandates that the court grant a continuance of hearing on a motion for a judge, summary judgment upon a good faith, showing that a continuance is needed to obtain facts essential to justify opposition to the motion. Ms. Hope, um, citation, Mahoney versus Southland Mental Health, the Associates Medical group, group. You can see it in the motion, which will be sent to Mr. Holmes. And um, Your Honor, um, I have another thought, and I'm trying to remember it. And so Miss Hope doesn't even understand the basis and the scope of this claim. And so she denies and or denies this claim because she doesn't understand the claim. And she needs to have, she needs to be in intensive medical treatment to receive the care she needs. And at that time, she will, she, she suggested either October a week from today, two weeks from today. I mean, Your Honor, in all honesty, my brain's not going to be fixed in a week or two, unfortunately. And, but at least Ms. Hope will have the medical providers there to help her understand what is going on. And so she can proceed in this and understand what in the world is going on and how this is 
this this is not this is not somebody who's this is not supposed to be difficult for somebody who has who's has a it's just neuro, neurologically I need that I need to be in a medical facility and I have one I'm going to and I'm very fortunate and I need to be there to deal with the scope of this claim and petition that is totally totally false so to my understanding to miss hope's understanding so miss hope is miss hope is deserves that right prays for that right to be in a medical environment all right there's nothing Our, there. but, there's hope uh, and she Mr. had hope. medical documentation your honor to, what's that she had, miss hope has additional medical documentation to provide and add on to this motion of continuance, but there are multiple entities yeah, that your are, honor. so um, you're, sir, I'm still speaking. You said that in a different case. I heard you say that to a different person when they were talking, your honor. I'm not so, sure what you're even saying. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm just saying there's a lot of medical documentation that's required in submitting this to you, sir. And if I was normal, I would have, you know, this would have been resolved, but with the neuro neurological damage, unfortunately, these things, they're very complicated, um, et cetera. So it's not, it's not, it's not asking for a million dollars, folks. I mean, this, this house is probably worth that he's basing a claim is over $250,000. Like, is this even supposed to be in the 61 limited actions? Like, this well, is all not I, good for PTSD, that, and she doesn't want to discuss this case any further because it's all, it's all, I just, I need to have medical providers, Your Honor. I only showed up because I want, part of this process is learning to, to use my voice, and I'm thankful for my doctor, so thankful. And pursuant to the American Disabilities Act, the United States, United States Constitution, I have a, a, a con I, there's an amendment. I believe it's the fifth, seventh, or ninth that says that I have a right to understand what is going on and be competent in regards to all of these legal, legal, this legal proceeding. Again, all I wish to submit at this time, Your Honor, is the request to set this for pre trial, trial please. Um, when I am safe, surrounded, when I'm in a safe place, surrounded by all, by medical providers and also, you know, protection from the people who are around the building that protect it. And I just don't feel safe. And medically, this is, there's also that reason as well. All right. Uh, Mr. Holmes, do you have any response? Uh, yes, um, Your Honor, I, you know, we've allowed Miss um, Hope to appear now three, four times. Um, she's never, ever been required to use her video. Um, she's indicated at the very beginning of this that yes, she was true. in a I medical, if you would stop, she is in a medical Miss Hope, uh, facility. Miss Hope, you have to let Mr. Holmes finish. I, I let she's you in a medical facility, she indicated at the start of all of this. And if that is so, there is no reason why she is keeping the possession of my client's home to which she has no title to and to which we have been seeking possession. She, she, I am going to ask the court to grant us possession of the home based on these statements that she is in a, has medical services and, and treatment. The last time we continued this two weeks ago, it was for her to get her medication, which now it's off to a completely different scenario. Um, and so there is no reason that this matter should be continued. Uh, we are ready and prepared to move forward to get possession of the home. And that's what we're asking for the court to do. Your Honor, I object to the, the claims to everything Mr. Holmes has said, it's all false. And Ms. Hope deserves to be able to speak with the mental capacity to understand this claim, which she feels, but she understands neurologically and mentally that she's not at the capacity that 
she once was and that her doctors are telling her she needs intensive treatment for. And so uh, Miss Hope is requesting that she be able to be at a medical facility, what she first stated today, that is full time and is patrolled by people who are armed with with proper equipment, you know, proper equipment like guns to protect the people that are there. So she is not hurt by somebody who's from her understanding, like she said, she does not understand the basis. There's no basis on this from what she knows, but she's not a lawyer and there's nothing. The things that, that Mr. McGregor have said, there's nothing on your claim. There's nothing on your claim. It's simply a fishing expedition. But Miss Hope does believe that she is still affected by her mental incapacity and her neurological damage. And not only does she feel it, her doctors know it and her medical specialists are saying the same thing. So Mr. McGregor is not losing anything, even if, for instance, this was, you know, it's nothing. Ms. Hope. So I, Mr. Mr. Court Holmes, I just want to say I don't appreciate your lying about your my honor i'm going to object to this ongoing that, nonsense that, yeah that, that, that miss hope my reputation you can, you can talk about you, your you, you can't, okay on, which i will miss, be reporting miss, by miss hope miss hope um if there's anything else that you wanted to say directly about the case you may do that but you can't cast aspersions at the participants in the hearing and I think it's important too that um, we get through these issues um, kind of one by one. So was there anything else you wanted to say at this point about the continuance motion? Your Honor, I have medical documentation to prove that I am not mentally competent to participate in this court proceeding because of my psychiatric conditions. And I also, Ms. Hope also has medical documentation to prove by her PCP and her referrals, neurologist, her pulmonary specialist, her physical therapist, um, the specialist for that's going to treat her tumor connected to her lungs and her hearts. Yeah, I've got, you know, my CAT scan and all that. This is all real. And I'm happy to present this evidence from behavioral therapists evidence from psychiatrist this is a real case and i would be honored for the opportunity to present all of this information to the courts okay. to show that this is not this i am not i am a, an american citizen and i served in the air force and not very long your honor and i wish i would have done longer i had some grad school completed i got a traumatic brain injury I am just not the same person, Your Honor, and I value contributing to society. This is not something that I have a social work degree. I have things I want to do to help my community, Your Honor. And I just need, can only start that by speaking up for myself because just because I have these injuries, Your Honor, doesn't mean that people can continue to victimize me because they think I'm an easy target. So I am asking to be able to participate in this court proceeding with medical 24 staff medical providers by my side in this court in the court next week for a pre-trial hearing and if i'm not in if i'm not per, with these if i'm not in the pre-trial hearing per, presenting the facts of the case which i would appreciate that your honor with my medical providers like i'm just saying i i need to be there but there are certain things that have to take place in regards to insurance companies getting on the document documentation it takes a minute and so yes i'm a very excited and fortunate but i have a right and it's my duty. It is my duty as somebody who served in the Air Force and loves America and wants to make America better that I'm doing myself 
a disjustice to myself and all the citizens in America if I don't stand up for my legal rights. So all I'm asking is for that opportunity as somebody who loves America and is so grateful for the opportunity to heal. Because how many people go through things like I've been through or going through and are going through who will never have a chance? I am one of the lucky ones. And it's my duty to speak in this case, Your Honor. I have all the best wishes for everybody on the screen, Your Honor. All I'm asking is for seven days to be in a safe environment where I can speak openly and understand the facts of this case and move on with this chapter permanently, Your Honor. And I requested to be with, a, be with another judge. And I also would appreciate moving forward if any legal official would adhere to their to their code of conduct and stop dismissing me as somebody who's a nobody because I can tell you I have a lot that I want to give to this to the community on the eastern side of Kansas to the state of Kansas and America I'm happy to do what I can but I can't do that if I don't feel well I, and I appreciate let me what, have my legal rights you're out you're saying, for homes um I think in terms of well first of all I think it's laudable that you uh served and loved the and love the country and that you um, are seeking to position yourself to pay forward the blessings that you've had. I mean, that's all any of us can do. I think just on background, um, this case was continued initially for one week from September uh, 9th through the 16th. Um, when you did not appear that day, the court- I was your honor uh, the, just a second the court um because i had concern about your um situation um i had uh, allowed the default judgment paperwork to proceed but i did uh, indicate my uh, willingness to consider any additional information that came in uh, we were here uh, two weeks ago today and at that time uh, i continued uh, this matter over the objection of Mr. Holmes. And it was at that time that you were saying much of the same thing you're saying today, that you have uh, documentation and that you're going to be presenting that and you'll file motions with the court. I seem to remember that uh, language. Um, and really, uh, I, I see a, a sentence where you ask that another judge preside, but I'm not seeing any reasons as to why you think that should be the case. And I'm also not seeing any new medical information. I know you had been very vehement about the circumstances uh, under which you're currently operating, but there's no addition to the file um, in terms of anything regarding your situation uh, since that last hearing on the 23rd of September. And I want to esteem and to the extent it's relevant to the question of this eviction, I want to very much take into account any documents, any situations you think are important, but those are not presently in the file. And so from the court's point of view, um, I would be inclined to think that um, there's already been uh, three continuances of this case, one of them for a couple of weeks. And uh, it seems that with no new or additional medical information, uh, it would seem that we would be uh, poised to uh, go forward at this time. So I would deny your request for uh, continuance at this time. Um, you have some options, uh, Ms. Hope. If you would wish to do so, we can go forward with the uh, hearing on this matter today. I assume that would involve uh, Mr. Robin. Holmes. Robin. Ms. Your Honor, I was calling my doctor to get confirmation that I am I've been treated by my doctor today. I'm well, just I thought you said you were at your doctor's office. I am on the phone with him. Well, you said at the beginning of the hearing that you were at his office. No, Your Honor. I said I'm with my doctor right now. 
respectfully. And I have, I ha I, I, I'm calling the receptionist to prove it to you. Well, because I'm not sure push. that the receptionist will want to give that sort of information out over the phone in a hearing that's being live streamed and recorded. So, your your honor, you're you're saying that you want to deny this because you don't have medical documentation. I'm trying to get my doctor on the phone. I was in a doctor's appointment, and he can send a letter. Stay, stating that he was on the phone during these court proceedings. I've never lied to you before. And so he can send a letter. I'm just, I'm just here discussing the matter with you. And my appointment is still ongoing. And I've been working with him intensively, as well as with behavioral therapists today and my PCP's office and my psychiatrist's office to get everything aligned. So yes, I have seen my psychiatrist today and he can prove, he can submit that documentation, but I'm on the phone with you for him to conclude everything that goes into the documentation. Well, and um, we have, and him and I have been discussing. So your honor, if I'm telling you, your honor, that I do have legal documentation to submit to the court. In regards to my medical, well, my well, medical. This, this other documentation was just sent here moments before the hearing. So I guess I'm I'm not understanding if you had additional information why you didn't send it in with the packet you sent me. Because I'm waiting on getting it sent to you because this is, I wanted to make sure that I know you said one time I didn't appear, Your Honor. I have pictures in which I did appear. And I was booted off. And I have voice recordings of when I called the court. I've been here, even though this is traumatic for me and does nothing but hurt Miss Hope's mental health. But Miss Hope is asking for an accommodation to uh, to get this letter in. And in this letter, it will state exactly what I'm telling you. Well, I think that um, I had previously hearkened to your heart's cry for accommodation and was expecting letters from two weeks ago, which haven't yet arrived. And so uh, I don't understand, Your Honor. What are you saying? I'm saying that two weeks ago we convened and you indicated to me you would be filing some motions and sending some documentation. And I don't have any I faxed them and I have confirmation that those were faxed and you can okay. file I, I see you sent a letter, really, um, but um, a promotion of continuance, but, Your Honor. But, but I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, Your Honor. My apologies. That's okay. Um, but I'm I'm prepared at this time to go forward with the hearing if that's what you want. Your Honor, what's the question? Um, I have overruled your motion. Can I take a 10 minute recess, business. please, before we, you go, you make your final decision? Um, we are already at 4.07 in the afternoon. We Your Honor, can I please take a five minute recess? Three. You can take a five minute recess. I'm going to reconvene. Your Honor, if I may, Your Honor, um, I have a physical therapy appointment at five o'clock. So I know that this is just going to go on and on and on. And so I would like to move forward. Robin, I'm Robin, gonna, can, yeah, can you gonna, confirm that I have? Gonna, I have, I have can, gonna, this is Julie Hope. Can you confirm that I have a doctor's appointment today with Dr. Chediak today? What time was it at? I already had it. As far as I, you were already Yes, scheduled. and I, yes, today, correct? On October 7th, 7, 2024. Is that correct? Yes. All right. And I told the doctor I need to talk to him more. So, um, I just wanted to get your confirmation that I had that doctor's appointment with my psychiatrist. That is, in fact, the case, the case, correct? As far as I know, yes, you were scheduled for today at 3.30. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay. Um, I please have the five-minute recess, sir. What? You said I have a five-minute recess, Your Honor. Well, I think you've...
taken a minute or two of it. Um, I'll give you three more minutes. We'll reconvene at uh, 4.12 and we'll go as quickly as we can in hopes of getting Mr. Holmes to his medical appointment. Your Honor, did you hear my psychiatrist receptionist stating that I was seen by my psychiatrist, correct? Yes, I did hear that you had an appointment with them today. Yes. So I am giving you factual information and that is it. That's, that is, that's a, that's a witness, Your Honor. So yes, I, well, I have okay. additional, I have. Are you wanting before, to take a recess or do you want to go yes. forward right now? Yes, okay. Your Honor. We'll take a recess then. Okay, Your Honor, I have my phone. I have the time showing, Your Honor, as. We're, we're going to reconvene at four on, 12. Four Thank four. you. Mr. Holmes, may I ask you a question to present to your um, to your plaintiff? Who's asking me? Uh, Ms. Hope, may I ask a question for you to present to your plaintiff? You discussed what is it. it. Um, if Ms. Hope is not, if if Ms. Oh, this is this is my doctor, uh, Doctor Doctor Tediak. What happened? Excuse me one second, Doctor. Excuse me one second, Mr. Holmes. Pardon me, uh, Mr. Right. Mr. Oh, Mr. Holmes, Your Honor, may I ask Mr. Holmes a a a, a question on the side room? One mm -hmm. quick to his plaintiff. It, it, that's fine if he's willing to visit with you, Mr. Holmes. Are you willing to do that? Uh, yes. Okay, Miss Bailey, if you could like a minute. Yeah, if you could put Miss uh, Hope, Mr. Holmes, and. Uh, Mr. Uh, Van uh, McGregor in there, please. And your honor, I just got off the phone with my doctor and he's going to be on uh, a So he is going to have that, that legal documentation to you in regards. And I, I, I just got off the phone with him. Phone records can prove it. So I just wanted to let you know that um, as I step away. Yeah, that's fine. Um, thank I'll, you. you talk with Mr. Holmes and then we'll see where we go from there. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, so I joined this break room, Your Honor. You'll be put into the meeting. Join it. Yes, sir.